So the next game coming up between Canada and Sri Lanka. And Prince Albert, well, he was uh, here earlier on to watch the opening game of the tournament. I had the pleasure, actually, of uh, joining him for a, a reception yesterday up in the palace. My name's Scott Hastings, alongside me, Rob Vickerman, former England Sevens captain, and Rob, a uh, crucial game for Canada here just to continue their good work by taking on the Sri Lankan team. Canada winning the opening rubber by 33 points to nil. I'll just come back to you because John Moonlight was outstanding and has been for Canada for many, many years and the captain today, but keep an eye out for Justin Douglas and also Nathan Hirayama in that number nine jersey. Well, for Sri Lanka, Sudarsan Mujitantri will captain the team. Matt Turner has recalled Srinath Surya Mandara into the starting lineup. And our referee today, Ben Cruz, from South Africa, will be officiating this one. So there's uh, Nathan Hirayama, who will be uh, kicking off for the Canadian team. Well, Canada, you'd have to say, Rob, favourites for this particular tie. Uh, very much so, Scott. It'd be a case of Sri Lanka being out muscle pretty much in every facet of this game. They've got to play to the fact that they're very light individuals, very fleet-footed and keep moving the ball. Any breakdowns, expect Canada to absolutely destroy them. And they'll use their experience, you know, they've got a really settled season team and they really are seeking success in this tournament. One of the hot favourites and expect them to showcase why that is the case. Big forward pack. Hirayama, that's Connor Trainer. Trainer decides to back himself, and Canada, too much power, too much pace, and Connor Trainer opens up the scoring against Sri Lanka. Trainer, another one of these impressive Canadian athletes, really is an all-rounder. Finds himself on the end here, well versed at playing at centre or wing, gets the ball in the outside and doesn't even need the handoff. He is flying down that outside. Impressive player, be it 15s or 7s. Expect to see this a few times in the game coming up. Hirayama, two points added for the conversion. And there, Connor Trainer. Well, he's had 22 test caps, playing in 15s. He has played in the 2011 Rugby World Cup. Saw him last year in England. And, of course, a lot of these players for Canada, crossover athletes, play between 7s and 15s and... Well, they perhaps haven't hit their stripes on the Sevens World Series Tour this season. And it was a combination, potentially, that they weren't ready. But here's Sri Lanka through Fazio Marisha. He's tackled, but does he get the pass away? Ball picked up. Wonderful scoop by Ranjan. Is he over? Can he get the ball down? Held up over the line. And what a cracking, saving tackle from Mike Falafal. Pretty much all the Canadians there back in a heartbeat. That just shows their experience. Douglas had no right to reel him in off the restart, but he came 10 or 15 metres after a flailing ankle tap. John Moonlight ever present on the shoulder. That is what separates great teams from good teams. Defensive efforts Five. like that. Sit. So your bandana will have to put it at the scrum against the heel, though. And, uh, well, Connor Trainer, he was trying to play football. Take another. But the ball taken over. And so Sri Lanka once again will have to put it at the scrum half, but it's at the scrum, I should say, on that five metre line. But it's such an imposing scrum that they face in the uh, the three giants for Canada and Chivanovic, Fawilavau, and John Moonlight. This scrum needs to be about half a second long. It's exactly that. So on the attack, well, fumbling the ball was Ranjan. Danushka Ranjan, and uh, perhaps that's the opportunity missed for the Tuskers from Sri Lanka. And there'll be few and far opportunities against this Canadian team. Like you say, a wonderful balance of massive mountain of men, but also some fleet-footed playmakers. Here we are, and the gas out wide with Douglas, Sit. the trainer. Ball put in to the scrum. Now the breakout here. Ball in two hands, and just... Another example of the superb pace within this team, Justin Douglas this time. 
backing himself on that wide outside channel, just as Conor Trainer did. Douglas in for the second Canadian try. It's almost nonchalant there, Douglas. Taking the outside. If you give this man a chance to run on the outside arc, he will take it. He does it time and time again on the World Series. Impressive pace, wonderful balance when he flows. And look at that, he's got 15 meters, sails around the outside, not even needing top gear. He is cruising there as he looks pretty comfortable in doing so. Liam Middleton's men then starting strongly. Two converted tries, 14 points to nil. It's uh, Canada over Sri Lanka. And our little mascot enjoying the sunshine here at the Stade Louis II Stadium in Monaco. Brilliant setting. Ball back into trainer's hands. Hiriyama just holds up the ball. Lovely little step from Hiriyama. Tried to get the pass out there to Lucas Hammond. All a little bit scrappy. Unfortunate the Sri Lankans there. They're trying to get themselves in between the offloads. Very clever. If you're not going to make the dominant hits, all you need to do is try and stop the ball being moved further. So often you find the Sri Lankan players getting in between the two Canadian players. Very clever. Crouch. Fine. Look at Hammond then. Sit. As the Fenian at the scrum. From the Toronto Nomads Club. So he picked up and go. For the scrum half, he feeds on the outside channel, and here Yama making it look so simple. One, well, when you're commanding the rugby football like Canada have done in this first half, it's no surprise that they're three tries up already in this tie. 19 points to nil up. Any broken field play, such as at the penalty, you look to try and find the space. The ball shifted out. You see there three Canadian players, the no Sri Lankans matter of just catching, drawing and passing again and making it pretty simple for this Canadian team, which isn't necessarily the easiest thing, you know, you've got to be accurate still in the way that they want to play this game, it really is becoming quite a procession thus far. Oh, tremendous skill from the wide outside channel from Nathan Hirayama, the kick is good from the touchline. He is the third leading point scorer this season in the World Series. So Canada, three converted tries, 21 points to nil up against Sri Lanka 34 seconds on the clock all comes from these restarts the Canadian players 10 meters behind here we giving them time to get up to full pace There's a, and you can see Rob Vickerman ball just comes straight back there Justin Douglas has a little step Mike Fulifau Fulifau ball carrier there having to go to deck Hiriyama, trainer. Moonlight is on the outside, and Moonlight, well, he likes to back himself. Quite happy just to take the contact, invite the, the tackle. Well, there was no option but to throw that long pass full of out. And once again, on the outside channel, Admir Jovanovic, and Jovanovic in for Canada's fourth try. It's one way traffic here in the Monaco Sevens, this global repechage tournament for the final qualifying spot for the Rio Olympic Games. And the Canadians playing as impressively as they are, expect to be in contention for that place. You've got a serious issue there, one side of the pitch, you've got John Moonlight, the other one, you've got that old lump, Savanovic, huge man, but he's very adept at moving quickly. He sees its base, identifies it. Sri Lanka trying to shut off any opportunity by flying out of the line. All that does is create more space for these big men. That's, uh, Confirmation of half-time score. 26 points to nil. Canada lead. Touchline, we go with and we score. Like so, just simple accuracy. Uh, 
um, they are blitzing up, so we either got to go up on top of them or around them. So let's make sure we get our depth, we reload quickly, so we can go around them, and then if we want to go over them, we can. But our first is to, to work around, so let's reload. That was an excellent execution. Boys, just for this uh, seven minutes, stay on task, stick to process, put our knees up, be very ruthless, eh? Agreed? Let's go. Okay, okay. Let's go. Okay, okay. Let's go. a minute now, boys. Come out hot. One, two, three, ten. Let's go, boys. Let's go through the process of this kickoff. There's their jumper right there. Well, that was the voice of Liam Middleton, the coach of Canada. He used to coach Zimbabwe. And Rob, you've been there in that huddle. When you're, when you're well out in front in a seventh try, and your coach tells you just keep the processes going, keep the concentration. How hard is that to do, or is it just automatic for these players? I think it's automatic. The focus at this point of the game should be just keep enjoying it, fellas. You know, really, it's a case of not having to go through the processes. In fairness, Sri Lanka are well and truly out of their depth. It's a case of making sure you can throw the ball around. You do enjoy your rugby. You do so by taking people on and playing with flair. So Sri Lanka kick off wearing the white jerseys against the Canadians wearing their traditional red jerseys. And for Canada, their captain John Moonlight taking the ball into the contact and as you can see the score in the Canadians favour by 26 points to nil. Here I am a casual in the way that he just clipped that ball up and Moonlight now stretching down that far outside. There's one brushed off. Here's two brushed off, but it was a tremendous tackle by Suri Yambandara. But just this Canadian wave going upfield, and it's just trying to find the space on the outside, but ignoring it and going in for the try was Mike Poulapal. Oh, my apologies, Jovanovic. Well, that's Fulifau actually, so sorry, our graphic was wrong there. Mike Fulifau in for the, uh, the try. Oh, pretty big man in fairness. But there, Fulifau really integrated himself well in this Canadian team. Came around the circuit three or four years ago. He's a bit of a big man, likes an offload, and he's become really adept footballer now. Happy in space, able to use his offload ability, which he still has at the top of his agenda, but creates a lot more space for other people as well. He's impressive this year. Rob, you were with uh, the coach of the Sri Lankan team, Matt Turner, former England colleague of yours. What was he saying about his team? We, you know, I was there when he was just saying that they're very lightweight, but they have got good ball skills, but physically they're just not matching the Canadians. No, they're not, they're not used to playing against such good players also. That's something worth mentioning. I think Matt's there purely to build the systems, build the team. You do that through experiences like this. So, yes, it's going to be a difficult afternoon for them, but at the same time they're going to learn from it and grow from that. So Connor Trainer releases on the outside is Captain and John Moonlight and Moonlight that's the five yard line. There was a good tackle made, but Trainer's got the ball back. And once again the space, well it was out wide, but it's route number one. And Shivanovic is in for his second try of the time. Douglas showcasing it's not just a matter of running around the outside of people, he'll quite happily go through the guts of them as well. He is not the biggest, so for see him to win these physical confrontations probably does suggest that the Sri Lankan team really are struggling to just deal with the physicality that's coming at them. Yeah, my apologies, uh, Justin Douglas. I could, and you know, it's just that these uh, Canadian players—they're all just strapping athletes, aren't they? They're all physically built well. And plenty of changes uh, on the bench. And it's a bench that many teams would happily have as their starting lineup. That's a Phil Mack, Kieran Hearn, Harry Jones, Zaruba, all bench players able to come on and continue this procession. Plenty of height on that one comes back to Hirayama. Switch play by trainer. Now this is the first look at Kieran Hearn who returns to the side. From the Castaway Wanderers Club also plays over um, in 15s as well as 7s. Here Yama goes in. You went off your feet first, the the side entry by White. And it's the last thing the Sri Lankans need to do. Any indiscretion is going to count against them heavily. Uh, they have just simply there, not had the ball in this game. You look at the scoreline, 40 points to nil. An absolute canter for this Canadian team. To give away ball there will frustrate Matt Turner and his coaching team. 
Well, Canada yet to concede a point in this tournament so far. They beat uh, Uruguay by 33 points to nil. They've already stuck 40 points on Sri Lanka. And there you can see the line-out being formed by Canada. Phil Bernal wearing that uh, number one strip just in front of him, then Chivanovic and Mike Fulafal. So, John Moonlight getting a rest on the sides. So, wraparound play. This is here, Yama to Kieran Hearn. Con Trainer. Connor Trainer steps back in. He's got numbers with him. Gets the offload. Phil Berner. Well, he was in the liner, he finished it, but he should be thanking Connor Trainer for that try because it was Trainer who made everything for Berner to go in under the posts. That's how you get happy forwards, isn't it? You're an outside back, but you run back towards the big man. Have a look at this, Connor Trainer, not just one, not just two, three, four, or even five. He goes inside six Sri Lankans to create space on the far right hand side of the pitch. Berner gleefully accepting that one. Trainer continues an impressive performance. Well, Rob, we saw a surprise earlier on in the tournament when uh, Ireland beat a star-studded Samoan team by 27 points to 21. Canada, though, will be one of the favourites here for this knockout phases of the tournament in day two, but they're playing well in day one, haven't conceded a point. Berna, he's just inches short, isn't he? Well, Falafau, he just had an easy angle and Canada in complete control. They are complete control, as you see Fulafab reaping rewards of his big aggressive frame. The test for this team today, I believe, will be the Germans. I think, you know, we've seen a shock with Ireland doing really well. They're the types of teams, the Irish and the Germans, who are coming into this slightly unknown, perhaps not known as much on the series, but very adept in how they play the game. And Rob, as Nathan here at Amma takes the, uh, the dropout, with, with Canada having posted two wins, so they've got automatic qualification through to the quarter-final, to the knockout stages, but it's not potentially, we've been talking about it, it's not potentially what you do in day one, it's all about day two, and, but ultimately, if you're setting down a platform, it helps having the confidence. And your sole goal for day one is to get to goal day two. It doesn't really matter about performance necessarily, whilst you want to go into the second day on form and performing well, it's a case of just getting there. Great athletic right. take. Ramon Vaca. You made your initial uh, placement and then you rolled back again. One movement. Well, we've hardly mentioned a Sri Lankan name in this second half purely because Canada have utterly dominated. You can't play rugby sevens without the ball, and Sri Lanka, quite frankly, haven't had the ball. Now, three times they've had the ball, twice given away a penalty to break down. The second one was off the scrum play where they broke open and they knocked it on. So really a case of lack of concentration when they do have the ball and just simply not been able to get it. It really has been a chokehold from this Canadian team. Phil Mack feeds that scrum, as you can see. He just wraps around, plays the scrum half position. Out on that wing is Adam Zaruba, another one of these uh, athletic players for Canada. Harry Jones has a little go. Mack gets the support pass. Good sevens here by Canada. And Phil Berner, uh, happy smiles for him. That's another try for him, his second. Supported from his teammates. This time, Harry Jones now making inroads in the midfield. Phil Mack as ever linking, getting the ball out wide. And have a look at this how not to tackle. We've seen some great efforts in this day so far of low chop tackles, but you're not going to get anywhere against a bigger man by playing up top. Phil Mack with the last play of the game. The conversion of the second try scored by Phil Berner. That's missed. But uh, handshakes all round against this uh, Sri Lankan team. Canada absolutely on fire. 57 points to nil, the final score of this Pool B game.